The Passion of Joan of Arc is considered a classic of the silent movie era and is directed by Carl Theodore Dreyer and stars Marie Falconetti as Joan of Arc and is considered by many to be one of the greatest films of all time. And after watching the film, yes, I completely agree. This is without a doubt one of the greatest films of all time and one of the greatest films I have ever seen. Everything from the directing to the cinematography to the editing to the acting. This film is without a doubt one of the most perfect films I have ever seen and a lot of it goes to Dreyer's direction and Marie Falconetti's performance. This is without a doubt one of the greatest performances I have ever seen put to screen and a lot of people say this. Many people will even say that this is single-handedly the greatest performance ever put to screen. And I would honestly agree with them. This is a fantastic performance. And for just a silent movie, many people will probably just look at silent movies and be like, oh, that was in the past. But no, this is a fantastic performance through and through. Though there are no speaking lines in this movie, Marie Falconetti gives a performance of a lifetime, and it's sad that this was the only performance she ever did on the screen, and it is a fantastic one. She is completely immortalized in this film. She is Joan of Arc. And when you watch the film, you'll understand because she is doing everything Every ounce of her being is in this performance, and you can tell it through her eyes. When I talk to people and I hear people talking about acting, everyone says it's all through the eyes. Acting is all through the eyes, and this is what this performance is. It is all through the eyes. And she gives one of the most compelling performances I think I have seen on a film, and Honestly, just looking at the performance, watching it transpire, it is so moving. Her performance and the entire film is completely moving. Dreyer did something really interesting with this film, and that is the fact that there is not a single establishing shot in this film. Many of the scenes, or just the cuts in general, are close-ups. We just see actors' faces throughout the entire movie, making it honestly a little claustrophobic and kind of tense, which I really did enjoy. It makes us get in Joan of Arc's situation where she's constantly being um, harassed by these bishops, these priests, as they're basically judging her to basically condemn her. And it's very well done. It, it feels like you're there, and it's just perfectly executed. The editing in this film is amazing. And I really don't have anything bad to say about it, aside from a few, you know, cuts here and there that don't work. But a lot of that is due to this movie being, well, extremely old. It was made in 1928. And also, I thought this was really cool that this movie came out at the time it did because Joan of Arc, in 1920, the Catholic Church finally made her a saint. And this is a movie basically commemorating that. And also, I love how this film is basically about her trial. Um, a lot of the dialogue, or not really the dialogue, but the speech that we see on the screen is taken directly from um, her trial, which are some transcripts that I have actually read, and they are pretty accurate. And I just love the detail with that. And that's basically what this film is. It doesn't really have too much of a traditional structure to an actual film, like any other film, and I really like that. And it is basically just focusing on her trial. We don't know exactly why she's there. We just know that this person is being, you know, tried for something that she's clearly innocent of. And 
really another film that this really reminded me of was a film with a similar title, and now that I think of it, is heavily inspired by this film, which is Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ, which was another film dealing with somebody that is condemned, and we don't see the beginning of why he was arrested and tried, and we, we just see the events as they are unfolding, and I think that's really amazing that this film has influenced so many different things. It has even influenced music videos. Look at Sinead O'Connell or um, Miley Cyrus's music videos where they do the close-up with them with short hair, much like Joan of Arc. It is the exact same. This movie is so, so influential in its filmmaking techniques and its performance that, you know, you can't escape it. Even... The Tom Hooper Les Miserables has a callback to this movie during the scene where Anne Hathaway is singing into the camera and her hair is cut. It is very much evoking the emotions of this performance. And that is just amazing that, like, I've really been noticing this. It, it's fantastic. Also, what's really amazing with this film, and crazy that it is even as good as it is, is that I've heard that Dreyer lost, or at least the original footage for the film was destroyed, and he had to reassemble the entire film from footage that he originally declined to be put in the original film. And I think that's awesome because I'm like, I'm wondering like, well, if this is as amazing as it is. What was the footage he originally wanted? Like, how good is that? And sadly, we'll never know. In the end, if I had any complaints about this movie, it would be small little things that are just nitpicks and not anything against the film itself, such as um, this movie is taking place in the 1300s and we see people wearing um, World War I helmets uh, for their costumes, which, you know, uh, uh, you're a little far away from that, guys, but that's just a little nitpick of mine. Also, nothing that has anything to do with the film itself, but it is so sad. The fact that this movie originally was like 110 minutes, almost two hours, and the only footage that we have left of the restored version is around 80-some minutes. So there is still footage of this film that is going to be completely lost to time, and honestly, that's just extremely disappointing. Guys, this is one of the greatest films of all time. One of the greatest films I have ever seen. The only thing that holds it back, for me at least, is it's just not personal enough for me. So anyway, with all that said, I'm going to give The Passion of Joan of Arc a 9 out of 10. Well guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. I've been wanting to do a bunch of classic reviews recently since I really haven't been doing that much lately, aside from the Star Wars reviews and a bunch of TV reviews that I've been doing recently, and wanted to get back into more classic films and films that I have been really wanting to see. So I've got a bunch of more reviews coming soon, so look forward to those, look forward to my other reviews, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review.